All right, Ultimate Noobs Nation, my name is Reed Nelson. This is Luke Hanlon. This is the Dream League Insider Recap Show. Pilots, 66-59 over the Polars tonight. Um, Dewan Grant with 20 points on 62% free throw or uh, field, uh, field goal shooting. He fit in very nicely, did he not? Yes, he did. Um, I think now, I think he's always been a better player as a secondary option. Um, we've seen that he can score and he can be a primary guy, but he's also a good passer. That opens us up his game in so many different ways. Um, you got to worry about Seth now, you got to worry about Joe, and then you add Dewan, and they get a good three headed monster there. It worked out very well for the Pilots, and uh, we'll get a little later in this, but it worked out for the Griffins as well. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, Drapko had a great game. When they, when they came out with their starting five, they're just huge. I mean, not like. Huge, huge, but like big, big bodies. So it it really makes a huge difference. Honestly, it's funny. I could see them, you know, the the Griffins being a matchup problem for them, you know, because they're now the most athletic team in the league, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, Johnny Ball with with a pretty solid game, um, but it wasn't enough. They lose by seven. Uh, I don't know if they necessarily played down to their opponent today or didn't failed to necessarily play up to them. They just didn't have enough down the down the stretch. Well, I thought the key for them was Munsell didn't get it going. We saw the last time that the uh, the Pilots played them as John Christensen shut him down. He did so once again. He obviously knows what he likes to do, and he defends them well. Um, if Munsell doesn't get at least you know 15 to 20 points, they struggle. Ball couldn't you know put on 30 or so, so they just could, didn't get enough scoring for them to win. Okay, Griffins with their first win of the season. They win by three over the Generals. Generals show up with only five. Missing Brandon Williams, Brandon Johnson, Miles Webb, uh, Griffin show up with all eight, including, uh, you know, Greg Wells and Andrew Robleski. Um, a couple of things to note: Griffin's going to get on a 7-0 run. Uh, G- Generals come storming back 14-7. Um, you you just mentioned this was one of the strangest games we've had so far this season. Why do you say that? Well, like you said, it started with a seven nothing lead for the Griffins, and then the Generals just came out of nowhere. And it seemed like for three, four, or five minutes, they did not miss a shot. Christian Brunt was draining threes. Ben Yelke made a three. James Carr made a three. It was just back to back to back to back. It was crazy that way. And then all of a sudden, the Griffins got a little bit of momentum back somehow, and they, you know, after halftime or so, I don't remember exactly what the halftime score was, but it seemed to be a close game with. 10 minutes left in the second half out of nowhere miles webb shows up at halftime and the generals seem to play worse with him their number one overall the number one overall pick in this league and then late on it goes back and forth back and forth and the griffins go to a smaller lineup and it works very well for them i mean they had arthur frazier and robleski on the bench for like five minutes near crunch time. <laughs> like 10 minutes yeah, it's like well, I, I couldn't understand why those two were in the game but it, it was working for them and overall the griffins win it was a game that you at first thought you were they were going to win easily, and then you thought they were going to get killed. And I mean, I I don't know how to explain it. I asked them if they had followed out. They're like, "Hey, these guys are these guys are on a streak." So, it, it listen, it worked out for them. Christian Brunt in the, the towards the end of the first half was four of five from the field. He ends up four, from the three point line. He ends up five of ten. At one point, the Generals were six of seven from the three point line. Ross Winnikins did not have a good game, and he just you can just see it on his face. Very, very, very frustrated. He's not getting any calls. He did draw a charge at the end of the game, which was a very, very, very big call. But we are now looking at a team of, I mean, Andrew Robleski had an opportunity to shine tonight. A guy who i never seen play this well. And I, again, I don't know if it's him just coming off the trade or him just having the opportunity. But, you know, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how Ross fits into this team moving forward. Um, this this team is not a half-court set team. This is going to be a run-and-gun up and down the court. Um, do the do the Griffins try to trade Ross Winnikins? He has value. He's he, he's one of the two biggest guys in this league. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to try to predict what Casey's going to do because we've tried in the past and it just never seems to work out. I don't know what he's going to be thinking. Um, it, for me, it would seem, yeah, trade him. I don't know who you would go out and trade, who wants him. That's a different question, and we'll probably get into that in the podcast, but... To me, he doesn't really seem to fit with this team now. They played better without him. Granted, he did have the tip in late that got them the win. I'll give him credit for that. Um, made the big play when he needed to. But besides that, he seemed lost in the court. Didn't put in a lot of effort defensively, offensively during the zone. Didn't fit in well with that. And they, I mean, it showed when he wasn't on the floor. They were a more energetic team, uh, better offensively, better defensively. I mean, DeAndre Ag had to guard like Bronson Byrne, and it was working. I, I don't know how, but it worked. And I give all the credit for the Griffins for this win. 
They have a trouble with boxing out, though, which they have to figure out, too. I mean, it's like when the ball goes up and they just look at it. So congratulations, Griffins. First win of the season. Nice work. Um, uh, again, la- late, Miles Webb puts up a three, falls, falls short, good defense on the play. That would have tied the game for the Generals. Um, at the end of this broadcast, we're actually going to show the last minute or two of this game. Along with the last game of the night, uh, the Mustangs versus um, the, and I have, it's like, it's weird because it's like, I just watched him play the Yellow Jackets, but like my brain's moving a million miles a minute and sometimes I just can't figure it out. So Mustangs beat Yellow Jackets by five. Tie game late, three-pointer Mike Franklin, three-pointer Mike Franklin, I think layup Mike Franklin. Or regardless, he had two straight threes that put the game away. Um, talk about this win for the uh, Mustangs. Well, I'm, Franklin was struggling all game, too, with his shot. Like you said, he made those two threes. He had a late block on Keith Durham, and that was the last time the Yellow Jackets touched the ball. Had a layup, missed it, but it actually worked out better because they could run off the clock. So good job by Mike late in the game here. Um, it seemed like the Yellow Jackets had, I wouldn't say had this one, but they had good control of the tempo. Keith Durham came out aggressive early, and then once the Mustangs started focusing on him, they started getting Abdi back in the, in the rotation here because, obviously, once you worry about Keith, he's going to get his open shots. Um, Mullen not as aggressive as I wanted him to see for the past about three weeks now. Um, I know the Mustangs are the better team. They know it. They showed it later on. But, uh, you know, it was a good fight for the Yellow Jackets, a very good contested game. Overall, the, the Mustangs came out on top, though, as they should have. Which we'll talk about. We'll talk about what I'm about to say on the podcast on Thursday, airing on Friday. We thought for a moment that the Yellow Jackets and the Generals would compete for that fourth spot. It now does not, unfortunately, it now does not look like that's going to be the case. It, it looks, even though we're now essentially at the midway point, that we have four teams that are going to shuffle for playoff position and three teams that are going to shuffle for draft pick position um, next December, which sucks, yeah. for lack of a better word. Um, but like the Generals losing tonight, that that couldn't happen for them. It just couldn't happen. I mean, because I want to say, you know, they're going to play the Knights, you know, soon and the Pilots, and you just can't lose a game against the Griffins if you want to get that fourth spot. So... It'll be interesting. Um, I believe Generals at two wins, Yellow Jackets at two wins, Griffins at th- at one win. Um, it's going to be difficult for them to compete to get up to that six, seven, eight win mark. So, but who knows? Maybe the Griffins hey, go to run. Hey, that's what I said. You always said the Griffins are a team that could you know pull off a three or four game win streak. Who knows? All the momentum's on their we side now. We will see. So another great night. Um, Thank you for joining us. We're going to replay uh, the tail end of two of our games because they were two of our better games of the season. Uh, you can stick around and watch that now. We will uh, chat with you Friday on the uh, Dream League Insider podcast.
Hey, we get a better look. Three, three, get it. 